Uh, good afternoon and welcome to the Corporation of the Town of Kirkland Lake Special Meeting of Council uh, held December 5th, 2017. Do we have the approval of the agenda, please? It's moved by Councillor Morgan, seconded by Councillor Barker. The Council approves the agenda for its special meeting of December 5th, 2017 as presented. All in favor? It's carried. Is there any declaration of pecuniary interest? None declared. Uh, item three, uh, petitions and delegations. Ashley, uh, you're gonna speak on a zoning application? Yeah. Okay, so the property in question is located at 74 Second Street, and it is actually the convenience store that is located between Allen and Station. Uh, so the applicant is proposing to rezone the lands uh, at 74 Second Street from commercial to residential. So the intent here is to remove that con convenience store in the front and make a residential unit there. So you can see the aerial imagery here. Uh, it's pretty in comparison to the other uh, dwellings that are in that area. This is the front of the building. It probably will refresh everyone's memory of the one I'm speaking about. So the applicant has had, um, the owner itself has had a difficult time trying to sell the property uh, because it is a commercially run building, so commercial mortgages would apply. So the intent here is to, they found, an, they found a purchaser they're interested in and in having it be a residential home, so I think the sale is conditional upon the rezoning taking place. So in terms of support from provincial policy and the Town of Kirkland Lake's official plan, there is no concern. Uh, I'll point your attention to section 2.6.3.2.7 which does say that the uh, opportunities for the conversion of existing vacant or underutilized buildings to residential units will be encouraged. So those are those neighborhood commercial uses that are underutilized. We are to encourage those conversions to take place. So as I said before, we're changing from local commercial C5 to residential low to medium density. And yeah, I kind of already went through this. The only thing I didn't mention was that uh, the site visit when we did do that, and you can tell by the, the images that we, the front yard setback is supposed to be 20 feet. Obviously they don't have that, so we need to recognize that. There's also a deficient side yard on the northeastern side of the property, so we need to make sure that we're recognizing that as part of the zoning amendment. So other than that, there was no concerns. Nobody um, raised any issues from a neighborhood context. Uh, we also cir circulated to internal and external agencies and received no feedback. Uh, some, most people just came back and said there was no objections. We did planning advisory committee meeting at the last meeting. It was a relatively quick meeting and the recommendation at that time was to approve the application. So at this time I will take some questions if you have any. Councillor Kiley. Is it uh, low density, is that up to up to a triplex or? Residential low to medium density is two units. Two units. One or two units. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Councillor Morgan. Just to give some background from the Planning Advisory Committee, um, I mean, it, obviously the new use is consistent with the rest of the neighborhood, so we didn't anticipate anything. Uh, obviously it's a little closer to the street than, than what you'd like, but that's the way it is and uh, you know I'm, so there really was no reason to uh, object to any any aspect of it there is parking available in the <coughs> back as well that's accessible by the laneway so there was no issues with deficiency in parking or anything like that so. okay. okay there's no other questions we have a resolution or, oh was well, there anybody in I guess this is an, a, a special meeting of council so we can entertain uh, any comments from the public concerning this as well? So I have a motion that's moved by Councillor Barker, seconded by Councillor Morgan. The council directs the town planner to proceed with zoning application number 24 at 74 Second Street and bring back a bylaw for consideration at the next regular meeting. All in favor? It's carried. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. Moved by Councillor Morgan, seconded by Councillor Barker, that Council adjourns its special meeting of December 5th, 2017 to a regular meeting of Council. All in favor? It's carried, thank you. 
And with that, uh, welcome to the Corporation of the Town of Kirk Lake Meeting of Council, held December 5th, 2017. Uh, we'll start this uh, uh, before the meeting with a notice. At its meeting of December 19th, 2017, Council will consider a bylaw to set the 2018 water and sewer rates. So we'll start today's meeting with a moment of silence, please. Thank you. Uh, we have the approval of the agenda. It's moved by Councillor Barker, seconded by Councillor Morgan. The Council approves the agenda for its regular meeting of December 5th, 2017 as presented. All in favor? It's carried. Item three, is there any declaration of pecuniary interests? None declared. Uh, item four, there's no petitions and delegations. Item five, acceptance of the minutes and recommendations. It's moved by Councillor Morgan, seconded by Councillor Barker, that Council accepts the minutes of the following meetings. The Planning Advisory Committee uh, meeting held August 10th, 2017. The Kirkland Lake Public Library held October 19th, 2017. The meeting to open 2018 <coughs> fuel tenders held November 15th, 2017, and the regular meeting of council held November 21st, 2017. All in favor? That's carried, thank you. Reports of municipal officers and communications, uh, six. One, we have Councillor Kiley, you wanna uh, moving council meetings to Heritage North. make a few comments and then let uh, Peter uh, do his report to council. Uh, accessibility issues have plagued the town of town hall for, but for several years with respect to accessibility to council meetings. Uh, we are required under law and human rights to accommodate individuals and employees as well. Several of the town of Kirk Lake buildings uh, do not meet compliance uh, besides the town hall. There's a need to complete uh, <clears throat> an in-house review of all premises and report back to council with recommendations rather than doing piecework along the way. Uh, I'll ask uh, Peter to uh, present his preliminary report to council that deals initially with the town hall deficiencies and his recommendations. Peter. Yes, thank you. Um, just to uh, bring everybody up to speed, uh, the, uh, there's both two, two uh, laws that govern accessibility in Ontario. One is the Ontario, the AODA, the Accessibility for Ontario Disabilities Act, and then the other one is the Human Rights uh, Commission. Um, the Human Rights, the Human Rights Code, sorry, Ontario Human Rights Code is uh, from 1992, uh, and the uh, AODA has started in 2000 and uh, I believe it was 2008, and making its progress all the way to 2025. The, uh, to summarize the issue, basically, if, if an individual comes to get a service or, or uh, uh, attend a, um, uh, an, ev uh, an event that's administered or programmed by the administration, so everything that's been delegated to the CAO and under, underneath, uh, we have a duty to accommodate. And uh, we will, we is, we, whether it's a staff for employment, for employment purposes or if it's a, a service that we provide for the public, we will accommodate, whether that could be us going to their house, meeting them on the street, meeting them at the Tim Hortons, if they can't come to one of our buildings. The one area the CAO does not have authority is council meetings and council chambers. That is uh, covered under the council procedural bylaw, and uh, only council can uh, choose where uh, to have their meetings and, and when to have their meetings. So the, uh, the whole thing essentially, what we're trying to do is we're trying to make council meetings uh, friendly and inclusive to um, a disabled resident that wishes to come to attend the meeting and or delegate. This building has, does have a lot of deficiencies and uh, as was noted, if they come to pay their tax bill or, or to see me, I will accommodate by going downstairs. Uh, obviously, council can't move with that accommodation. It's, to the, it's, the, it's the way the regulations work under having an open meeting of council. So one of, the, one of the suggestions was to move council chambers and basically to change the procedural bylaw to move the council meetings and council chambers to a more accessible location. 
the one that we've identified has been Heritage North. Uh, at a previous council meeting, there was uh, some discussion regarding the, uh, the YouTube. Uh, so we looked into the YouTube, moving YouTube, the costs associated with moving YouTube, and uh, our IT staff basically had come back with a couple options. Um, one, one costing about $4,600, uh, allowing us to have YouTube at Heritage North, and the other one costing about $2,100 plus tax, depending on what we want to reuse from this room. So uh, council had received a package on that. They've also received a, uh, a legal opinion on the matter. So um, that's, that's, uh, that's essentially my report. I'm happy to answer questions on the, um, on the, uh, the actual quotes we got, if there's any particular questions about how the logistics would work. Councillor Chamier. So they're going to use the, the same microphone we have and everything? Yeah, that's one of the options. That's the $2,100 yeah, option. Why would they not do that? Why wouldn't we? Yeah. Well, again, I'm giving you options. I know. I, right. I didn't know why they went to the, the other one. But yeah, okay. but just, a, just an option. I mean, right? We have they, all that, that yeah. stuff already. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Ro uh, Roman, did you, uh, sorry, Jim, did you have your? Well, yeah, I was just looking actually for a little more detail on, on, on what those prices covered. Like, what do you get for 2100 and what do you get for 4600 So for $4,600 uh, in the package, um, we can pur purchase three wireless boundary omnidirectional microphones. They basically look like a puck one on each table to be shared by three people. One of the existing handheld wireless microphones with the stand that are already at Heritage North will be reused for the, for the, for the presenter's table, right? So anybody delegating council. We will also purchase two additional wireless receivers to provide endpoints for the total of four microphones. We would reuse the existing PC, camera, audio mixer, and amplifier from Town Hall, which is sitting in that room. If we need to sound amplification for when speakers for speakers for the audience to hear, if we need it, we can use the existing speakers as well, as long as we purchase a $50 cable to install the mixer to the wall jack at, at, uh, at uh, Heritage North. The pros on this is to reduce the trip hazards. It's a cleaner look. The cons, it's a shared mic, and the mics are always on. Uh, this, this actually is staff's recommendation. Option two was the $2,100 one. We would reuse these. Um, the existing two wireless microphones will also be available. We would purchase a 50-foot, 12-channel audio snake to consolidate individual microphone wires into one. It will run from the tables behind the presentation screen to the equipment closet where the mixer, amp, etc., will be located. We'll purchase three 36-inch 36 36 cable trays to, to contain audio snake cables in areas that might pose a trip hazard. And we would reuse the existing PC, camera, audio mixer, amplifier from Town Hall. And again, if we need a sound amplification for the speakers, we will reuse the, we will reuse the one from this room as long as we purchase a $50 cable uh, to install the mixer to the wall jack. The pro for this, it's lower cost. It reuses existing mics. Mics can be turned off when not in use. The, cause, the cons, potential trip hazards. The cables are visible at council tables and potential for microphone and cabling connections damaging during setup and takedown since the meeting is portable. So every time you plug and play with stuff, you, there's higher chances of malfunctioning. So those are the, we did look at basically get buying a camcorder, but the camcorder started at $3,000, and then we, got, we went up from there because we still had to add in everything else. So it's a, again, it's a temporary uh, fix to get YouTube compliant plus um, all the accessibility stuff. The room will not be permanently set up. It'll be like if somebody wants to book the room on the, I guess the Wednesday, uh, you know, after the council meeting, there'll be a teardown. Room is bookable the next day until the next council meeting. Yes, Councilor uh, <coughs> Council Morgan. Okay. Yeah, I definitely like the $2,100 option. I like the fact that it's, first of all, this, for the time being, it is temporary. Uh, it is the lowest cost, and it does allow us to individually turn our mics off and on, which I think is uh, probably the best option because uh, I think you'd end up with a lot of noise otherwise. And, and so I, I really support that particular option. And I've read your report, Peter. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Councillor Kiley. So, Peter, these uh, mics here, we can't just, couldn't just move them over there. 
Well, that's the that's oh, the that's, that uh, that's the twenty one hundred dollar option. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. The forty six hundred dollar one isn't though. No, these would these would option. remain here. Just so the, the problem with that is that you need wires connected yeah, to those, right. and the wires will be running, so you'll need a thing to cover them, and that's why the price is there. Yeah. I, like I'm, I'm on the outside, that's it's temporary in a way, and we'll see what happens after. We'll use that for a couple of months, and we'll see where we're going with this. <laughs> have we, uh, Council Roman? Did you uh, uh, have we uh, uh, put a cost together on what it would cost us to put an accessible washroom? Uh, Jason to uh, council chambers. Um, there's not. It's not just the accessible washroom. It's uh, proper railing, of the automatic door openers. Mm -hmm. We haven't costed that out. Um, rough estimates, probably 150 to 200 grand, to make okay. this build, this floor, and this room totally compliant, right? Because uh, the, the again, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Making make sure that you know accessible the the height of the the delegates table is properly uh, height requirements so there's a lot of things that go into it so so uh, but going forward will we be uh, putting more of a uh, instead of just an estimate we will get that cost again that's part of the original um, I guess I can't remember the original date November 7th council report was to do a, uh, a follow-up study on all our spaces so this building public works building all the buildings to make sure that they're what's needed to uh, renovate them to be a, to meet the code by 2025 and put dollar figures beside those. Okay. So because this move is, is being looked at as temporary, uh, can we start our investigation with Town Hall? Sure. Because that's yep. Yep. We're a temporary move. It, we might as well know what cost it would cost us to have someone freely come in uh, real in here. And, uh, you know, and, and just to give it more strength, I think the fact that today we were advised that, that the automatic door opener downstairs uh, wasn't functioning properly so I guess that's another reason uh, but uh, it, it's certainly not to say that no money has been spent trying to keep these things up We'd, it would be interesting to see what we have spent uh, on the elevator on the uh, on, on ongoing maintenance of, of that type of thing as well. I know the um, the door opener we spent since I've been here we've already spent about five fifty five hundred dollars yeah. um, and that's in the four months that I've been here um, to and to repair it, so yeah, it's not cheap for sure. Yeah, it's not just the. Auto I, I know you're not pinning it just on the, the automatic door openers, but <coughs> these doors here, and even the council door, if you're in a wheelchair, like to get up to pull that door open, like you better be awfully strong. Yeah, and I think that's what he's talking about—the yeah. automatic door openers. There's a lot of, uh, basically we'd have to get a part of the 2018 budget, there'll be a recommendation to bring in a, an expert to look at all our buildings and if we want to prioritize town hall by all means, um, that one will get the priority um, to come in and give us the assessment because there's probably stuff that we don't know um, that as part of both, from, my, from obviously the building code but also if you see from inclusivity, right? So there's other stuff like the seating, um, you know, we might have to make room for some of the seatings to, to be able to back up a scooter in it, right? So, um, so there's a whole bunch of things that we got to look at, proper railings and whatnot. So um, it, would be, it would definitely be a, a, an expert to come in for all our buildings. Yeah, right? and so I don't think just doing, reviewing this building is the answer. If we're going to do it, we might as well do we it have all to do and more. find out where we're going to be at. Yeah, for sure. Um, just trying to think. Any other questions or nothing? Um, so would we going forward then could we also maybe put together uh, because accessibility going forward is, is certainly an issue and uh, can we put forward maybe a recommendation as to maybe every budget we should budget so much money towards accessibility rather than chasing our tail and just trying to repair if we put so much so much uh, aside each year and then we prioritize and choose it's a would, great would suggestion possible yeah. Just to clarify the procedure, I'm looking towards the town yeah. clerk. So if they, if this pa resolution passes, the next thing would be come back to change the procedural bylaw. Yes, my suggestion is we'll do a, a resolution just to amend the procedure bylaw at this point in time, since the intent is shortly to redo our entire procedure bylaw. So, so 
So would that give us opportunity and uh, enough timing, say, if we wanted to have our next council meeting at the Carriage Door? Is that possible, or do we have to wait until uh, January? I would probably wait till January because Heritage North might be busy for bookings for Christmas season. Right, so. Okay. So I have a motion that's moved by Councillor Kiley and seconded by Councillor Morgan. Whereas at its meeting of November 7th, Council defeated a motion to temporarily move Council meetings to Heritage North and tempor temporarily suspend recordings of meetings. And whereas at its meeting on November 21st, Council carried a motion to reconsider this, this issue at its meeting of December 5th, 2017. Now, therefore, council approves temporarily moving council chambers or to uh, council meetings to Heritage North, utilizing existing equipment in council chambers for recordings. Discussion. All in favor? Let's carry. Peter, you're going to talk on uh, first the operating budget variance report. call up uh, some staff during my presentations this is uh, to everybody who doesn't know it's Adam he's our deputy treasurer yeah and just so I could just mention before you start to it just for discussion tonight there won't be any uh, any uh, for discussion and any questions but there will be no decision made tonight on the on the record yes that's So good evening everyone. Um, what we wanted to do is give everybody an update on the uh, 2017 operating budget. So tonight is, uh, we did a variance report as of the end of October. The, um, my presentation focuses on year-end projections. However, Adam is here to help answer any questions you have of the uh, actual variance to 31st of October. So I'm gonna go through the, uh, the presentation highlight year-end stuff, and then I'll put up the, uh, the spreadsheet so uh, if anybody has any questions. So, um, so following, uh, just to keep everything consistent as part of the, for the 2017 variance, we wanted to make sure that the, whatever the budget that was approved back in May, we followed the same format so we can't, so we wouldn't uh, add confusion. Uh, to everyone, so we basically uh, used that template and uh, updated the numbers. Uh, however, in part of a 2018 budget, you will see on the water side, and then when we get to the tax budget in a few months, um, we are going to be reformatting that to be a little bit more user friendly. So the op the variance report uh, represents a snapshot of the operating budget as of the 31st of October. It includes our best guess of year end projections. Uh, just to note, the police, library, health, social service, and housing boards, which uh, legally are not under the control of the CAO, uh, were assumed to come in on budget. I haven't identified them in any of these the spreadsheet, just because, for, but from my perspective, we're focusing on the civic administration budget. And it, when they do come in, whenever numbers do come in from them, if they do have a variance report, I will send them to council to, to let them know to address it with the, the respective board. Do you want us to ask questions as we go along? Sure, just sure. Sort of mind your own business until you finish. Whatever's comfortable. I, I just uh, wanted to ask on uh, on, on the edge on the dock for the police library. Do you know what that comes out to as far as our, as far as dollars? Um, I, I don't have a The, uh, just a reminder that uh, water, wastewater are funded by direct billing and not the property taxes. So everything on here is funded by the property taxes. And due to the timing of uh, recent hires for the treasurer and the deputy treasurer and some other internal capacity pressures, this is only on the operating side, not the capital, right? So there's no capital variance reports. So just some general comments on the overall. Um, staff have been diligent in controlling all discretionary costs while keeping service standards I intact, so uh, as best they can. Uh, as previously noted, I had imposed a 90 days hiring slowdown, uh, which has since been lifted, uh, which helped, which temporarily helped with controlling some costs. However, it was starting to impact some service standards. 
And one of the things we did uh, early on uh, since I've arrived is uh, we started tracking the waiving of various user fees and or the in-kind support we provide to, uh, to the community, just because those we need to put a dollar figure to it uh, to better reflect it and count it for it. So again, I'm focusing on the year-end projections. So um, I'm going to look uh, to basically what the year-end budget looks like. So it's basically made up of four items. Um, making some corrections to the uh, approved 2017 budgets, which I'll go into details. Settling up some legal and contractual obligations. Bringing the corporation up to compliance. And some uh, wild card items that are, uh, we're projecting that haven't come in place yet, but we're expecting them to by the end of the year. So some of the corrections that we had to do as part of the 2017 budget, they included adding in the base budget six months of the CAO's compensation. Six, three months of the executive assistance compensation. We had to ba add back into the budget some uh, employee owed compensation from a reorganization that was done in November of 2016. And we had to credit back the Bernhardt Morissette properties for that 5% uh, increase. We brought it back down to 35%. Yep. Peter, what did that 5% amount to in dollars? $22,000. Thank you. Peter, I just, oh, Councillor Roman, please. Uh, I've got a question. Um, with, with respect to the, um, the water budget now, um, one of the things was that uh, the water clerk hadn't been budgeted in the water budget, they'd been budgeted in the operating budget. Has that, was that corrected? So, so the dollars for that position are coming out of the operating budget. Right. Two thousand, thank you. Okay, thanks. And Peter, just on, on that slide there is uh, uh, again back. To, is, is there any dollar numbers that we'll be looking at? Or what that? Are Thirty thousand dollars. Number three, ninety-two thousand dollars, and about twenty-two thousand dollars for number four. So, um, so these are items that were not budgeted for. It's yeah, budget correct. So they're they're adding pressure to twenty seventeen. Yeah. The next uh, issue that adds pressure to the uh, year-end projections were uh, we resolving some of lawsuits that uh, were pre-2017. So um, that one uh, is about, uh, well, there's a couple of them there. I know the one was about 100,000, and then the other one was about, um, I think, 80,000, so 180 for the one. And then we've uh, signed a collective agreement and did some retroactive pay. Um, and I believe the retroactive pay was... Uh, approximately uh, sorry. approximately uh, $250,000, 300000 uh, I won't know for sure as the pay is being processed during this pay. So uh, uh, roughly about two hundred fifty to three hundred. dollars Yep, please. Adam, some money was put aside for this already. Eh? I believe that's correct, yes. So do you know how much uh, we're over now? Or? Uh, I don't know off, offhand. Okay. I can't get back to you. Uh, that, that will be accounted for during our year end. Uh, because uh, certain am amounts are included on in our balance sheet as liabilities to offset this this expense. Yeah, I think that was at one percent maybe. I'm not sure yeah. offhand. Okay. And, and Peter, just as far as that uh, resolving lawsuit from 2016, so that's it wasn't there was nothing budgeted in 2016, nothing budgeted in 2017. Correct. So no, that's on Correct. the table. Yep. I, I guess because we didn't know we were going to have that. Seven MOL orders. I'm dealing with 16 separate 
occupational health and safety complaint, which I've been here. We don't have a functioning HR department. Um, we have, uh, yeah, so uh, I'm happy to answer questions if anybody has questions about the active positions and why they didn't reinstate them. Uh, I, I call it the compliance unit because we're, we're running a $15 million corporation uh, with a whole bunch of, uh, you know, we're, we're the private sector has all the regulations. We have another 140 on top of whatever the private corporation has. So uh, that's, you know, 220 staff, uh, four different bargaining units. So, uh, I guess that's also ongoing for when we do the 218 budget that, as yeah, well. Yeah, so, they, so they're going to be hired, hopefully, you know, um, I know that a couple of them won't be hired now probably until February just because of some of the positions that come in, but uh, it will be part of the 2018 budget, right? So we're going to be impacting that. So uh, for 2017, it's very minimal. Um, we've got Adam out of the field, so. <laughs> so. And some stuff we're waiting on. We're waiting on some funding agencies. They've done some internal audits that we might have to pay back for some grants of previous years. So, um, and I'll get to that in a sec. We're, uh, hope we also have about, uh, actually, I'll just go up there. This slide is probably easier to show this. So, the, this is the anything in red is uh, over. This is how you guys approved the, um, the the budget back in May. Yeah, any question on this? Or? Yep. Okay. I'm just looking for uh, first to administration treasurer. Uh, then the budget, you got the the actual, and then in the last hundred million, like administration was that for the last two months, we spent hundred and ninety thousand. When you only spent four forty seven for ten months. Like that that's a big I mean that that's ninety five thousand that's the uh, that's the salary for the CAO and that's also the uh, yep 80,000 plus the plus the executive assistant yeah, I talked to right. about this. yep and then the other one was uh, treasury from, from 189 to 445 so from 18,000 a month to 130 a month for the Treasury Department included in that $189,000 is an insurance credit of $122,000. For year-end purposes, it has been told to me that council had decided that that would be moved into a reserve fund. So if you take that out, you'd basically be adding that $100,000 back. So I mean- So it'd be 165, well, 165. Well, instead of saying 189, that the actual would be more along the lines of- th Yeah, three, 300 and change, yeah. And this was as of, as of October, so there'll be two months of the year left after that. Plus, uh, you have to take into consideration myself and the treasurer were also not involved. Our salaries were not budgeted for up until, well, sorry, my salary wasn't budgeted for, there was a treasurer's budgeted for uh, up till October. So there's also an additional uh, salary in there for two months that wasn't budgeted for. Yeah. We can break down the deep. So uh, uh, on this slide here, Peter, uh, so the, the under roads uh, are 106 percent of our, so we're showing our, we're going to be over by 161,000, and what would cause that? Uh, part of what was co is going to cause that is part of the wild card that Peter was referring to earlier uh, with regards to some of the work that was done. In, uh, we had a 
an audit done by one of our provincial funding agencies and has identified that we may have to pay back certain funds. Uh, that basically represents the amount that we'd have to pay back to the province. And is that that's the best place to show that line? So the expense was it more just the revenue would be less, right? So. Well, it's the, um, we have to pay back the, the expense that we pay. Okay. Councillor Roman? Yeah, I have a couple of questions because we'll be dealing with the water budget tonight. Um, for starters, we're projecting less uh, waterworks rate levy than, than budgeted for. Is there a reason for that? <coughs> uh, this appears to be a temporary situation that should probably uh, even out by year end. Uh, it was a uh, lower than expected metered water which is causing it. Okay. Um, okay, ne next question I have um, with regards to the wastewater now. Like I had understood that last year we were budgeting um, the wastewater to be 80% of, of the water levy. Now, this is considerably lower than the 80%. I'm just wondering what's going on there. There, it's, it's probably about $150,000 short, so. Uh, for wastewater, uh, we, uh, we're underspent on our hydro by at least $50,000 due to a one month lag in billing. Uh, that's expected that we will, rec uh, will receive that bill by year end. Uh, our, we have about $32,000 less revenue than we expected, to, uh, also due to our, uh, our metered billing and we're about $10,000 underspent on natural gas. But, but initially, we were to, to bill 80% of the 1.9 million, so we should have been, we should have been billing people 1.6 instead of 1.4. Some of those so buildings were for metered water, though, which is a little different. I think what you're saying, the budget number should have been higher. Yeah. Yes. Right, yeah. So we basically left the budget number as the same of what you approved, right? Oh, that's, that's, yeah, so, mm -hmm. so we've left it, we didn't adjust it, right, for 2017, just because we're making a whole bunch of adjustments in 2018. No, but how, so. I'm, my question is, is how come we didn't bill 80% of, of the... Well, that's not the right, I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Why, why, so, yeah, I guess, why wasn't, why wasn't it 80 percent? Why didn't the budget get approved at 80 percent of the water budget, is what you're saying? Why didn't it? Why, that's what you're asking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that I, not sure. Was that asked during the budget I, I debate? You're right when he says uh, yeah. it's be because of the, of the meter thing. Right? The meter cannot go 80 percent because they don't know what they're doing. I don't know how to do it. But the, the, the budget amount should still be 80 percent of yeah, I'd have to look at the, the budget discussions, uh, what happened in May um, when you guys, when the council approved the budget. Um, okay, because yeah. that, that's sort of, we're starting off already 150000 in the hole because of that. Okay, um, and, and yeah, next, and similar question now, uh, the budgeted amounts for the transfer to reserves for Waterworks, it's 117. So I would have expected for the wastewater to be 80% of 117, and it's actually higher. So that, again, that something doesn't add up there. Um, we, we're, we can look into it yeah. and report back. Uh, okay. These are, again, we're going off the approved budget. So uh, we definitely can, uh, um, hopefully it doesn't make the budget worse. Um, but uh, we can definitely look into it. And, and, and then my, my last question would, would has to do with um, the repair and maintenance uh, amount uh, in, in the wastewater. Um, 
the uh, the year to date is at two hundred and three thousand dollars, but the year end projection is right back up to the two seventy five. Are we anticipating a lot, or is that just um, because because it, and I, I, what I'm getting trying to get to with all this is that our year end projections we're, we're, we're projecting a significant deficit in all these that we're trying to raise rates and I don't necessarily agree with with these um, th these projections so well, I think it would fit That's the revenue. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that those are all revenue. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought that was the expense. Because look at the then the Bell Lake. We're at one zero two seven. Now we're at thousand eighty seven and plus two thousand. Then it should be minus two thousand. For Gull Lake, we we were ex we budgeted to spend one point oh two seven. We're actually projecting to spend one oh eight seven, which means we're going to be sixty thousand okay. dollars over overspent. So for our, for the waterworks rate levy. We're anticipating only getting 1923 when we budgeted to get 1964. Okay. So, those are revenue, those are yeah. Revenue. Oh. Um, so, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's uh, like I said. That's when we get into discussions now with with, with regards to the water budget. These are some of my concerns. Here. Yeah, and that's that's the uh, that's the one of the reasons we tabled the the water budget today. And not voting on it until the 19th to have mm -hmm. these discussions, right? Okay. So, thanks. I'm just wondering, uh, like going forward, um, like we show variances where we're, we spent more than what we were budgeted. I'm, I'm just wondering, for instance, on Gull Lake, what what would we spend? How would we spend sixty thousand more than what we budgeted for, unless it was something sudden or? How do, how do we spend more than what we're budgeted for? That number was uh, provided to me by the Waterworks program when I asked the manager how, uh, uh, what his year end uh, expenses were to look like. Uh, that was the number that uh, he came up with. Uh, I took that at face value. So, so uh, I'm just wondering how, how we spend more unless it's. So we, we don't have a proper uh, reserve fund, so when the water main breaks, and we have to replace a pump or have to make an emergency, we're doing it. Okay. And that would be the expense, yep. right? So, um, and then we would just, you know, at the end of the year, we would just, it's a deficit. And, and, so. and, and you know, we can understand that as well. Yep. Yep. But I, I'm just not hearing any reasons for the overages. I'm hearing an example of why we might have went over, but I'm not hearing why we did go over. Right, so that. remember, this is a, this is a point in time, uh, about three weeks ago or three, four weeks ago, the various programs are projecting year end, right? Um, these projections are not the final year end budget that the auditor will see, right? We still have two months to go. So uh, this is our best guess at that point in time of what they think, and maybe they're anticipating, I know on the road side, they were, anticipa they were not anticipating the snow, the early snowfall and, and plowing. So I can guarantee you that on the road side, that $160,000 may be going up, yeah, right? So, yeah. And, and that's, you know, that's all reasons, right? But I'm just wondering, going forward again, if is when we have variances, plus or minus, if we could have the reason for those variances and what makes up those variances uh, as well. So you would, I guess, finance would get them from each department as to why we're spending more than what's budgeted for. Uh, and we have we have the bulk of that. We're happy to share it. Yeah. yeah. So, so we already have some it. of these assumptions uh, could be wild card, could be anything. But those assumptions are having a bearing on what we want to charge the taxpayers for this uh, water and wastewater in 218, aren't they? And that's what I would, you know. And that's, that's the, uh, because of the water budget getting passed uh, prior to the uh, year end, it's always going to be a best forecasted estimate. I, I right? guess the bad thing about forecasting too much or too much of an increase is 
uh, we can never give it back to the ratepayers. We can never give it back to the to the uh, receivers of the invoice. Uh, it just comes in as a surplus at the end. Right, and we would turn that into a reserve fund. So yeah. the following year, we could it would balance out, right? So. Um, Yeah, just another comment. The uh, I believe the treasurer left what March, April, July. or July? July. Okay, but we haven't had an update on the. Uh, we used to get uh, sent by email uh, a total breakdown, as Tony was saying, uh, monthly, and then a quarterly update similar to uh, what you presented here. So, obviously, uh, there were a number of items that weren't properly budgeted or, or actually even budgeted for, like salaries, as we mentioned. And uh, I guess this is what's kind of thrown us, thrown us off because it's, uh, it's, it's not been a very accurate <laughs> budget to what actually happened. If you look at, I mean, you're projecting, I'm maybe ahead of myself here, but uh, a deficit of 320, but if the uh, grant repayment is required and the interest charges, there's another 475,000, or yeah, 475,000, we'd be looking at an $800,000 potential deficit. That's 8%. We have to make up for that at the beginning for in 2018, so. Yes, and there. Yeah, if it's we. It's a tough pill to swallow. That's for sure. Yeah, there's a there's some there's some uh, you know this is obviously um, you know walking into the uh, the organization for myself and Adam we're we're trying to help with provide some some updates of where we're at. Um, could it be more uh, detailed? By all means, right? The 2018 budget. The intention is to do that. Um, we're definitely happy to work with council to see how they want the reports and what what disclosure they want. Um, but this is what our best estimate of what the year end is look like and the wild cards are pretty significant yep. um, if everybody that owes us three years and older taxes comes today and gives us a check mm -hmm. that's a nine hundred thousand dollar revenue right it'll wipe out the deficit yep. um, there's also the uh, sewage uh, insurance litigation from the the old uh, sewage plant uh, which we have a uh, discussion on later on about um, if kind of budgeting in two-thirds of what their ask was. If we were to get that, again, that's a, that's a positive. So there are some wild cards, and there's a lot of um, what I've been prim primarily focusing on is catch-up and clean-up of uh, whether it was the 2017 um, budget or stuff that happened before the budget, um, which is everything on this page, right? So yeah. I, as uh, Tony mentioned, uh, it would be nice to be able to get whether it's by the end of uh, the October numbers, uh, you know, the month, the month, the month uh, printout of all the different uh, departments, then you can accurately see where it's offside in certain places. Because right now we're just getting totals. Right. Yeah. And and what? I, I, and I'm not blaming anybody because <laughs> there's obviously it's been a shortage of staff in in the treasury department, but uh, it would have give us a more in-depth uh, uh, idea of what, what's happened. And what, what I'm trying to do with uh, the presentation was um, focus the discussion on the year end versus the, the variances of the end of October uh, because it's the, we're coming up to year end and um, as you mentioned about it impacts next, the deficit or the surplus impact next year. So, um, you know, as, as the weeks progress, we have three, four weeks left of <coughs> year end um, these numbers will obviously be more refined and then we'll end up doing a year-end uh, report uh, sometime probably in, I guess, February, give us a month to, to compile it, uh, of what the, uh, the year-end numbers look like, right? Uh, with the intention of being done before the tax budget comes through so we have better numbers, right? And uh, like I said, maybe we can collect those, all those taxes. It uh, puts us in a positive. If, uh, if we get letters from the, the various ministries and the funding agencies that we have to pay them back, obviously that adds a lot of pressure, right? So, uh, and if it doesn't snow, again, uh, you know, we get, we get the positive on the roadside, right? So. 
So, so. Uh, also, Peter, so. with regards to the, uh, so things like uh, uh, regional, so uh, yeah. under um, the, um, I'm just looking to see which one. Um, the DSAB. Uh, uh, no, under the provincial, uh, provincial offenses. Oh, you know, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm revenues. I'm seeing a huge uh, difference in what was anticipated and what we actually received. And I'm wondering, are, have we talked with anyone in Haleberry as to uh, uh, what uh, check we should have coming forward before the end of the year? And was the, were we so short because costs went up, or were we short because provincial offenses went down? Uh, I can confirm that uh, we had received uh, three payments, uh, roughly $25,000 each, uh, and uh, it was a very different from uh, the prior year. So I, I don't know exactly what happened there, but our share definitely went down, and it looks like it was consistent because I think I saw the, the last quarter come in as well, roughly for the same amount. So uh, $100,000 projected is, is very, very close to being accurate. As to exactly why the provincial offenses revenue went down, that's a shared pot for the region. I'm not exactly sure. I know the cost went up considerably through the Attorney General's office uh, for administrating that uh, went up considerably, but I'm just wondering what we, how we fell short by so, by, by so much. Yeah, part of, the, part of it, not, not, I wouldn't say the majority of it, part of it is also part of the provincial offenses are revenues from our bylaw officer. Our bylaw officer was off for six months, right? So for maternity, leave, for paternity leave. So. So would it be worth making? I, I think Tom and I sit on this. Uh, it, it, there's not a lot of meetings, is there? But I'm wondering if it's good, if it would be worth if we can get you a number to call, and you can ask the young lady uh, what we can expect before the year ends, if that's possible. So we have a, a, maybe a, a more accurate, uh, a more accurate figure. Yeah, I don't. Is there a big difference from last year? Like like your your, your quarterly uh, checks or yeah I mean but sorry about that uh, we budgeted one hundred ninety thousand yeah. dollars based off of uh, the revenues that we were seeing last year and we were coming in at approximately hundred thousand dollars so it's approximately half like we were getting about yeah. forty forty five thousand dollars per quarter last year because and that's all the offense in the region and then they split it to yeah, all that, the that's my, that's my understanding of it yes okay that's what I thought too yeah yeah. So our, our the, the checks that we've been receiving uh, have been quite quite different than last year. Last year we had uh, four quarters, approximately forty five thousand per yeah. quarter. This year it's 25. been about twenty five. Yeah. Oh, because I think the justice of the peace, uh, you know, the cost went up from one hundred and fifty an hour to through the attorney general to to I think three hundred dollars an hour. So there, there's higher costs, and that comes off our, our checks as well, right? But maybe we could just make that call to. And does it take into consideration any possibility of rebates back from our regional partners? Could be a health unit, could be, uh, could be. Uh, uh, I did not take that into consideration. Uh, historically, I know that DSAB does not give uh, rebates back for the most part. Uh, I can't speak to the other regional agencies. Yeah, so. I, I think hist like historically the Kamiskamy Health Unit does. And uh, it's my understanding that we may, we may be receiving a rebate check. So maybe we could follow up and find out how much that would be. Uh, and, and because uh, what happens when they have a surplus, uh, DSAP puts it into the reserves, but the health unit has in the past wrote a check to each municipality for, uh, because that's what we're charged for, right? So we may be having some credit coming back there that could impact the, the budget as well. Uh, and Peter, <laughs> provincial offense, we have to know next year what the budget. So that's important to, to get. Yep. So no, again, this is, a, uh, this is a snapshot for the tax budget. We will have everyone's year end. So we'll, uh, all the regional agencies will have obviously ended with their financials. We'll have, we'll have obviously our financials, so uh, we'll have a better, better snapshot. We'll also probably get all the, the final uh, contracts for the OPP of what they want and what they, uh, they charged us in 18. And, Start in 17 and then 18 and with the library board and, and all that as well, so, right, so. Yeah, like, like the other one that doesn't make much sense is TPR. I mean, it's not even half of what the year-end projection is. 
so I don't know what if they didn't give you all the numbers or well at the time uh, the TPR the did not include the retro pay they are getting the retro pay as of this next pay so as of October yes they were lower than what was budgeted okay. but for year-end purposes they're going to be considerably higher yeah and then okay. might also be missing uh, the window <laughs> like uh, heating and all that from the, the hospital it's always two three months late just make sure Adam you keep an eye on that Salaries alone, I uh, had as of October being underspent by $125,000. And they had some dietary administration that was also $37,000 underspent. So uh, oh. th th that explains a lot of the variance as of October. Because usually that's one that comes out. We usually we usually overspent on TPR. Hey, Todd, I think every last, anyway, last seven Forever. years I've been here. Hey? Forever. Forever, yeah. One year we weren't. Like, I remember so one if year we could we come out uh, even, that would be a, that would be a help. And, and just, it also might be just a time lag as well. With the hiring yeah. slowdown that I'm, I uh, put in place, uh, I, did re I do recall that TPR had submitted some positions. So uh, again, just going through that process slowed down the, the numbers for October 31st. I'm going to call up uh, our treasurer and our uh, town engineer to join me. Since everyone is new, I kind of promise this will be my last uh, can of doing the budget presentations. All right, so. So tonight, um, we're basically tabling the water and wastewater budgets for 2018. It's a recommendation. Uh, we are not uh, asking for a vote uh, to allow both public comments and uh, councillors to uh, digest the information, um, come back perhaps with uh, uh, questions and answers that we can come back to if need be, and if, if, if we can answer questions uh, via email as well. Happy to share that as well, and then we can, we can publish those as part of the, uh, the 20, the, um, December 19th um, meeting so um, I guess I can start with our power our PowerPoint presentation uh, again it's uh, we're not asking for a vote tonight it's tabling it um, the budget works towards council's objectives of moving all water and wastewater costs from the property tax levy onto direct billing uh, satisfying uh, the Ontario regulations uh, this possible this budget where follows where possible councils adopt a 20-year asset like life cycle plan <coughs> the overall analysis we consulted with our independent financial auditor about working towards satisfying the regulations in uh, accurately accounting for direct and indirect costs on the water and wa wastewater system and uh, where we are allowed to phase in um, various costs just because we realized that the pressure would be significant um, some of the uh, provincial regulations require some of our components and infrastructure to be properly maintained uh, through various uh, Ministry of Environment and Climate Change orders, uh, which leaves us little discretion to, uh, to defer some municipal uh, capital projects. Uh, for the purposes of this year and to help uh, its illustration purposes only, we've included a three-year forecasted, forecasted budget of where the cost will be. Essentially, um, the recommendation is a 15% increase on water rates uh, based on the following cost drivers. The um, moving from uh, the property tax levy to the um, direct billing, we have two costs. One is the direct staffing cost. It's, it's, it's one position. Uh, it's the billing uh, clerk. Uh, it needs to be 100% funded in 2018, proportionate between water and wastewater. And the indirect program support cost, which is uh, in, the, in the private sector, is referred to as corporate overhead. And that we're phasing in over three years. Uh, that includes everything from uh, councils, a proportion of councils' costs, 
the CAO's costs, treasury costs, insurance, legal, um, uh, HR, all the, all the corporate services, I guess, if you want to wrap it up uh, into an, in, a, in one setting. The other significant cost driver is a uh, capital project to, uh, to deal with the brown water, the technical solution that Aqua had presented a few months back, and uh, replacing uh, some actuators uh, that are the end of life cycle as, as identifying the asset management plan. So uh, when it comes to some capital, capital programming, the, some of the equipment, if it breaks down, and even if the municipality doesn't have reserve funds, we will replace it to keep the system running and to keep it compliant. So what, we've, what we're trying to move from is from a uh, ad hoc, let's, uh, let's fund it to uh, when it breaks down and we'll deal with the deficit at the end of the year, to planning for infrastructure, right? So this, this, this budget cycle also uh, tries, to address, tries, to, tries to address and focus on the future. On the wastewater side, um, essentially the same costs, right? Um, direct staffing, indirect uh, program support, and some, some pumps, uh, repairing one pump, and the, the one pump I believe is about $90,000, and then to buy some two extra pumps that we have to have uh, on spare uh, as part of the ministry order. Some future trends, um, capital infrastructure will need to be significantly increased to uh, some of our aging system components. Some of these are big ticket items. Well, water, wastewater are, is, is an expensive infrastructure uh, business. Some are regulated. One of the things that we are after going through the actual way we bill, um, it was a kind of a unanimous, unanimous internal discussion that we need to start focusing on putting together a plan to go to a universal water metering system and we'll be coming back to council at some point in 2018 with a, uh, some, some policy decisions. Um, one thing too we looked at is the, the processes of wastewater are generally more extensive than on the water treatment side. And the, obviously the corresponding infrastructure is more expensive. Wastewater rate as a percentage of, wa of the water rate will need to be gradually increased over multiple years to accurately reflect costs associated with it. In 2018, the wastewater rate is rec recommended to increase from 80 to 85% of the water rate to cover costs. Um, basically, from my experience with the City of Toronto and the City of Guelph, wastewater rate is usually s between 60 and 90% above the water rate, so 1.9, 1 1.6 to 1.9%. And that's it, and I'll turn to the, s the um, PowerPoint slides. Yeah, uh, Peter, can I just comment a bit? Uh, you mentioned looking at meters. My experience, having lived in North Bay, when they switched to meters, it ended up costing five or six million dollars for the meters. Uh, everybody figured they were going to be, because they only had two people in the house, they were going to be paying less. At the end of the day, they're paying a hell of a lot more than they were paying before. and. Uh, it conservation of water probably improved because the bills went up so drastically and uh, when you have for Kirk Lake for example if you had to spend a couple million dollars on meters uh, it'll be a long time getting your money back so uh, it sounds good in theory but in practice it's in most places it hasn't worked out that well and I guess the other thing uh, I know when last year when we did the uh, uh, this 20 year plan at the end of the 20 years it was supposed to be I think this was for the water treatment I believe there was supposed to be about 2.2 million dollars there in reserve uh, which didn't seem like a hell of a lot of money if you have to replace that plant now I mean there are government grants but are they going to be a 90% like they are today or 85 uh, so the Ministry of Environment is basically saying these days you have to fund your own improvements and capital expenditures uh, down the road uh, my biggest concern is and I, I guess I'm going to ask you this question is in that uh, was it 3% we went up last year or 5 
uh, in water. And part of that was to go into reserves. But what happens, I find, and it's getting on the reserve question, I guess, is that we really have to look at this uh, in the long term. Uh, it seems like all the money is going into this big 45-gallon drum, and at the end of the day, when you need ex expenses to pay, it comes out. And it doesn't end up in a separate reserve account. And uh, I know I've mentioned this to you, and that's something that council uh, will really want to look at in the new year, because down the road, we want to make sure that that money is there for the intended purposes. And uh, I don't think that's been the case in the past. You can agree or disagree on that, but I think you would agree. So, yeah, the whole uh, concept of reserve funds and and funding of the reserves is uh, definitely a long-term strategy for any asset. Um, so the province has um, some; they're they're nudging and pushing all municipalities to develop that process. It does it does mean higher rates today to put into a bank account to spend 15, 20 years down the road, right? Uh, so uh, historically, uh, politically, that does add pressure to the, whether it's on the tax side or on the water side, um, just the, the, the notion of it. And what we're, we're you know, definitely working towards that uh, direction, building up our reserve funds. And, and as you'll see through the, uh, the spreadsheets, we, we increased it. However, the capital funds that we're requesting for in 2018 are stuff that we expect to spend. So that we're not actually increasing, we're not actually planning on putting anything into the reserve fund because we're not, that would actually increase from 15%, it would go above that. So um, something definitely to consider as part of long-term planning. And in regards to the rates themselves, I think I've, I mentioned this to you. Uh, I just took, talked to my daughter out in Calgary and asked her to fax me her water and sewer, and they're paying, she's paying $159 a month, which takes into account water, wastewater and drainage, uh, waste and recycling, uh, garbage pickup, there's a, there's a monthly fee on that. So uh, even with our 15% increase, we're, I know it's, it's a little hard to swallow for people, but uh, our costs are not outrageous, what we're passing on. Uh, to the taxpayer right now and we have to look at the long term like you said to have that money there for uh, in the in a reserve it's either pay me now or pay me later that's a hell of a lot easier to do it on a quarterly basis or an annual basis to have that money set aside and make sure it's there and and if sorry and if we if we had uh, if it's part of 2017 when wastewater was moved off of the property tax levy um, some of the pressures that we're adding to in 2018 are stuff that were missed. So if they were, if they were done, we would have had that room to either A, put into a reserve fund or tackle more of the infrastructure backlog, one of the two, right? So, uh, so definitely, definitely, we didn't, we didn't want to, I know I got pressure from our engineer to increase um, uh, the balance for stuff that they wanted to do. Uh, however, I thought that it wouldn't be... Um, you know, uh, given given the the tax side of things, deficit projections. You know, I don't. I, I'm trying to limit the double whammy, I guess, uh, of, of it. So, so up here we have the uh, the recommended um, water budget. We've changed the format to be a, hopefully a bit user friendly, so people understand the various expenditure categories and the revenue categories. Um, just so it's uh, more user friendly to the, to the to the public. Essentially, we're looking at uh, revenues of uh, well, revenues. So when it comes to the water side, it's direct billings. Your revenues have to match your expenses, right? So our expenses are 2.25 million. So we're anticipating billing out 2.25 million, right? Which is a 15% increase from 2017. Compensation um, is increased. Again, part of the uh, compensation is, you know, you get your annual increase from uh, your existing staff's wages and benefits. Uh, they're increased to uh, the union rate plus the non-union rate plus the 
the employer portion of the various benefits. Plus, this is the water portion of the billing clerk is also in this $114,000 increase. So that used to be on the tax side. On the tax side, so the billing clerk and the program support, when we do the tax budget, will be reduced by these same amounts. So just so, just so it's clear for everybody to understand. Uh, so. Councillor Roman and then Councillor Morgan. Now, in, in order to address that for 2017, can a journal, can a journal entry be made transferring funds from the operating budget into here so that we're not budgeting well it's pay for, so pay for this year. I, I guess the question would be where would council want the deficit if you put it in the wa if you remove that from the tax so it brings down the tax cost but it inflates the 2017 deficit for water which I have to roll over for 2018 but is that what 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 you're trying to do is is, is pay for everything water related in the water budget so Correct. Can, and and that one position got missed in, in and program support right yeah but but it was um, budgeted for and levied in the in the operating budget so can, can that money not be transferred into the 2017 water budget so that we don't have to levy for the 2017 deficit next year so we're removing the the dollar figures for those for both of those costs program support and um, uh, well I'm, I'm just talking about that the, so the, so the, the, the issue is the the issue is uh, we the water budget was set for 2017 right so it would add this would add a cost to it no no right add, no transfer money into the water budget from the operating budget to pay for that instead of paying for it next year why don't we why don't we address it this year i guess is what i'm saying you're budgeting for it, the 2017 I, deficit right now. yeah i think i think at the end of the day whether i run a bigger variance this year or a bigger surplus this year the next year's this is going to get hit next year anyways right no because you don't have you wouldn't have to pay for it then in, in next but year i'm budget. but the tax side will have to pay for it yes but right in but 2017 I'm removing money from the 2017. But that's where it's supposed to be, though. Like right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It's. I think. I think what we're trying to do is we're trying to keep the year-end numbers projected. We, we're happy to talk to our See, auditor because, about because it. Because right, right yeah. now you're projecting a 15% increase to people's water bills, and part of that is to pay for An adjustment. this year's deficit, where that money could come from this year's operating budget. Yeah. Okay. It's gonna it's gonna impact the operating budget, but at least it's cleaning up the water budget, and you're not raising <coughs> all of it. Yes. Yep. <coughs> yes. We, we we can we can look at that. At making that transfer. Councillor Morgan. I'll, I'll wait till the end because my question related actually okay. to the uh, PowerPoint. Councillor Barker. But with that move, I think we also have to expense those services too under the 2017 so it's not just transferring the funds you have to transfer the um, assets and the liabilities over to that side which going back to Peter's point you're stealing from Peter to pay Paul what side do we deficit and what side do we because it won't affect next year because next year it's a whole new what, it, what I'm concerned is every year the, the the next year's budget starts at where the last year's but where, where the previous budget was so if we're going to budget next year for for a 2017 deficit that just gets buried into the water budget from then on um, so ju just to be clear the, the de deficit here is we're projecting the 2017 deficit ninety six thousand dollars right on this sheet yeah. that is not related to the the billing clerk or the program support so we're still going to have a ninety three thousand dollar deficit mm is that what you're not not it not if the money were to come out of the operating budget to pay for the, the clerk like it should have but you oh, still need I'm to do sorry. Um, okay. Peter, did you wanna... yeah so, so the operating budget would the salary for the operating dollars would fund the salary in the water budget this ninety three ninety six thousand dollars has nothing to do with the salary so it's it, like it would balance it out so my, my, my wages my compensation in 2017 right for example would have been 600 grand right the deficit is still the deficit 
right? So. Uh, Councillor Barker, did you want to? No, it's okay. Okay, Councillor Shannon. Unless you have money to pay for it from the water budget, I wouldn't worry about it really. But if he says, yeah, I have, I could put it there and pay for it from the water budget, then it would <coughs> give you a break on your side. But if you transfer money from their side and transfer the amount, then it comes out. Then there's no difference. But if you have in the reserve 94,000, then you could pay for it and then it helps. If we have yeah, it helps your side. Yeah. I, I'm just concerned that we're, we're raising people's water bills or proposing to raise water bills 15%. And a big part of that is because of the 2017 deficit. And it doesn't need to be. It would be the same thing, Jim. It wouldn't, it wouldn't change. Well, it, was, it, it would still be 15%. No, no, it wouldn't. Because the 2017 money would be rolling over. Yeah. Is what you're suggesting. Because the 100,000 you transfer would not be transferred next year. So you would still be missing that 100,000. Yeah, 000. but you're, at least you're not budgeting for, for the 2017 deficit. You're budgeting almost $100,000 here. Yeah, but your revenue, your revenue would be 100,000 lower for next year, you, you would be coming back to the same thing. And I'm not saying I'm happy with this, but I'm just saying that's yeah. what would happen. Well. Yeah. Uh, Peter, one of the questions I have is uh, on the, um, um, concerning the uh, legal, uh, this, the wild, one of the wild cards, I think it was up. So I know water has to, that was on the sewage, or was that on the water side? On the sewage side. Yeah, I, I'm, no, I'm talking about our, our legal costs, uh, uh, settlement that we settled with the staff. So does that have to, when we have a legal uh, situation like that, so we've never, so that was going back to 214, I think, eh, or two, I think around 214, but at that time we never, um, like should the legal of an employee in the water department have to come go into the water budget or is, can that be a, is legal a separate line for the whole corporation? Well, it's, it's the, um, if a worker is injured and has to go on workers' compensation, for example, uh, and we have to backfill, it's going to hit the water budget. So it's the same well, scenario. We don't have anybody that works for us in the water department. Yeah, we do. Uh, just that's waste, but I mean in water. Yeah, we have, uh, is it nine, nine staff, nine FDs? Yeah, yeah nine FDs. Oh, oh for yeah. the underneath the ground. Yes, yeah, 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 on the, on the distribution side. side. So yeah, so, so as I was just going through, so the compensation is the distribution side <coughs> of water uh, and, and proportionate for the billing clerk. The um, purchase good, sorry, the purchase services is Aqua, right? So the uh, twenty to six hundred and ten thousand dollars is the Aqua contract, but they're in the facility, they're in the plant, the treatment site, okay. right? So we do have staff. And the rest of the so transfer is the distribution of the water. The distribution of the water, right? Which is what we we maintain with the town staff. So and and as far as um, charging, uh, properly allocating it. Wherever the, the employee's home base is, that's where it needs to get allocated, right, so. And, and just further comment on what Councilor Carley said about the water uh, meters. Um, you're gonna do a, a, a costing <coughs> on what it would cost, but could we also do a costing on what it would cost should individuals wish to Actually, there is uh, two options here. There is uh, an option for the uh, public or the building owner to pay for his own uh, meter in one shot, uh, as well as the valves and connection. Or the other option is uh, the we have a supplier which we can uh, make a settlement for the supplier and to the town, and the town will charge uh, periodically with every uh, payment for the water. We're gonna charge for rent 
for the dial, for the meter. So uh, the town wouldn't pay a big amount of money right away, but it will, uh, whatever is, uh, is gonna be charged from the supplier, we're gonna charge plus the uh, administration fees from the town to the uh, uh, building owner or to the uh, owner of the meter. So meters will be rented in this way to the building owner or to the property owner. And would there be any study done to help the private resident uh, to determine whether a meter would be beneficial to them or not? Is, uh, can they go somewhere to... to the, the idea of the meters is uh, it has actually three main goals. The first, the first goal is to control uh, the water consumption because there is, uh, I realize that there is a lot of leak areas which we can't identify. Uh, installing meters is not gonna only be at the buildings, but also it's gonna be the, it's divided to areas. So the total reading of the meter for the area, it will be the total re reading for the meters installed for this uh, every specific building. If there is a leak, I will identify there is a leak in this area. Uh, what is uh, the presently happen is the water treatment plant uh, pushing about 40, uh, 400,000 cubic meter a day, and what's being measured is about 500,000. So there is a big gap between this uh, water production and water consumption. Where is this water goes? It may be for leak, it may be uh, some areas consum consuming more than we expected because there is no meters in most of the residential buildings. So we need to identify that in different, it's not only gonna be uh, for the areas, but gonna be uh, including regions, including different uh, from smaller size to big size. This is one goal. The second goal is to have an actual consumption for water. The water we are producing, it's very costly. It, uh, it cost us uh, too much money to from taking from the lake until we give it to the customer. So it's too much cost. So if we control the consumption of water and control the amount of, uh, of production water, this is will reduce the cost eventually for every uh, single customer, as well as for the town and the water treatment plant. Uh, the third uh, main goal is uh, improving the quality of water. Considering the future uh, prediction for, wo for water consumption, this is can give us an idea, uh, our consumption today, it gives us an idea and uh, uh, statistics can be done to predict what consumption will be in <coughs> 10 years and in five years and in three, in three years. By this way, you can uh, put down a strategic plan for the water consumption and how we can improve the quality of water and the production of water. But I guess the only danger with a meter is could be if people conserve their water so much, then we get less, uh, in, we get less money in, but yet our costs are always going up. Now, our cost is high because we are producing uh, too much water and we don't pay, we don't get paid, paid back for it because we don't know where it goes. Now we are uh, dealing with uh, residential areas by room, how many rooms in the, in the house or in the apartment and the, 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 the residents pay for that. Regardless to how much they consume in cubic meter, uh, this is this is considering loss, considering loss for the, including there is there is actual loss. It's been uh, like regular and uh, all the series, including the loss amount for the for the for the for the water. But what we are losing losing here in the town is more than any prediction. So we need to identify. I need to put my hand where is this losing goes. So for example, would we meter the water going into the splash pipes? 
Yes. Okay. It so will be it's not there then, it's... It's, it's, a, it's no, it's, it's gonna be co consuming the water, just the water, and there is, uh, in technically, in each part of the town will be uh, air valve and uh, there will be a pressure valve. It's, there is a technical, technical process to include that within installing the meters in different areas to control the water, to control the water and to, to ensure that what the customer consumes, he is paying for. Okay, thank you. You're okay. Sorry to labor on those questions, but <laughs> appreciate the answers. Thank you. Oh, Councillor Morgan, sorry. Yeah, um, and Pat alluded to this earlier. There's something very familiar about this discussion uh, about meters versus no meters. Uh, we've talked about this at length before, and I'm just wondering, you know, if we shouldn't dive into the filing cabinet and see, you know, what what we decided last time, because um, you know all these are valid arguments, and I totally agree with. Uh, with where uh, Samir is coming from, but um, you know, we came to a conclusion not to do it, and I remember having a, a you know a lengthy discussion about it. And I'm not, maybe I'm getting jaded in my old age, but I'm not really keen on having that discussion at length again uh, when nothing's changed. So um, it's, you know, we we've very recently we had this discussion, and I don't. And, and for whatever reason, we decided against it. I don't remember all the details, but uh, um, and uh, while we're, while I've got the uh, the microphone on here, I'll just go back and, and ask my other two questions. If you don't, if you'll well, indulge me, um, when when we had uh, Aqua in here last year, and and our staff, and we were talking about the uh, switching from uh, switching the sewer from our tax bill over to the water bill. Um, we looked at a beautiful 20-year plan that had all the increases all laid out for us, and uh, is that now in the trash bin, or like what, what, what's the status of that particular report? Well, that gets updated uh, as part of every... I don't recall every, being a 15% increase, though, and that's where I guess I'm... Yeah, and, the, and, and just a couple questions. Just to, on the water meter side, the one thing that has changed, you're now completely direct billing. No more tax subsidy. So when you go to direct billing, they're consumers, right? They're customers. Uh, so the demand's coming from the customers that they want to pay for consumption. Yep. They don't want to subsidize other people's water bills, right? So that's that's a big I'm significant I'm pretty sure change. that was part of our discussion right. too. <laughs> but it wasn't. I, I, up until this year, it wasn't direct billing. No, no, I realize right? yeah. that. But we've been so. talking about the direct billing for a long time. So, okay. Yeah. Um, on the 15% uh, the uh, increase... Um, I guess I'm not. I don't. I don't need you to explain the 15 percent. I just need you to, I guess, let me know how that report that we paid good money for is dovetailed into what we're talking about tonight. We're getting one pump for ninety thousand dollars, basically, of that report. The two hundred thousand dollar capital cost is for the brown water. So the capital, and then the program support and the uh, direct in, direct costs are the rest of the pressures here. So of that 20 year asset life cycle, right. We're getting one pump in okay. this in this report. All right, from that, right? That's the, good. The, uh, we would if we didn't okay. have the brown water issue, we would have got more. Okay, but we and and I know Samir had asked to follow that. Yep. So yeah. it would have been I think we were looking at twenty three percent. No, because I yeah. mean the public's yeah. going to ask yeah. 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 what happened to that report yep. because yeah. we were all sitting here glowingly saying, "Oh, this is great. We've got a map now for the next twenty years." And that map now is in the glove box, and it's of no value. It hasn't like, been because yeah. uh, on the f <laughs> on the forecasted 2019, 2020, 2021, uh, you can see the capital increase. Okay. All right. To make up for that. Uh, Next issue question, loss. and this is one that I brought up the other day, and I just want to bring it up in the open meeting. Um, as part of the um, swastika exercise, and part of the. Um, uh, environmental assessment that's going along with that is that we're looking at all of the lift stations in town okay are looking at um, for wastewater yeah, yeah. we're on water we're no on. but this is from the uh, the slideshow that you did oh okay, okay. okay. that's where that's where I was coming from on that one you want me to put up the wastewater budget uh, not yet okay. 
And uh, anyways, I just want to know that this is all being coordinated and we're trying to not buy stuff that we don't necessarily have to. Um. <laughs> so one of the things is um, obviously the environmental assessment process. It's its own yes, I know. process. Uh, in order to keep the system functioning, um, we still have to meet the compliance. If, if where we can, I do believe that we, we, it's our approach where we can not purchase something because we know it's going to be uh, decommissioned within a year or so. Again, the, the environmental assessment, those timelines aren't right, uh, hard in stone. I agree. But for example, are we, look, are we exploring options like instead of buying that pump, we're leasing it or we're renting it for you know, a year or something to that effect rather than purchasing a pump that's essentially going to be worthless by the time, you know, yeah, it's we're, we're looking at all, yeah, yeah. I'll okay. defer to, yep. That's, that's all I wanted to ask was about capital. Yeah. Actually, for Sustika specifically, we even more, do more than that. We sometimes take some pumps which doesn't have a future use and it will, all that plant will be demolished within a year, a year and a half when we get approval for the Ministry of uh, Environment. So we're using the bumps there to substitute some parts in different uh, bump station and in the, in the, water, in the uh, Kirkland uh, wastewater treatment plant. Okay. So, but in addition, having said that, we have to keep things running mm -hmm. until we get approval for the Ministry of Transportation, uh, Ministry of Environment. Otherwise, we're going to get uh, penalties for that. So uh, we. I'm only asking that it's coordinated. That we're not. Yes. That one hand is talking to the other hand. That's all. Exactly. Okay. That's uh, that's why I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> perfect. Thank you. Thank so you. I I I'm seeing the two main drivers for the water. Okay. The water. One main driver in the water side is the brown water. Has there been any consideration as to going for funding? for that expenditure on the brown water through OSIF or the CWWF or uh, because there must be funds uh, available that may fund a good portion of our brown water problem. We can look into that. That's very yeah. important because it's going to be uh, uh, an amount that we don't have to reduce the water because of it. Well, it's... It, that, that's it, where I'm... Yeah, if there is, if there is funding chances are we won't get a letter back confirming funding before the 19th of December. Yeah. <laughs> so, so if there is funding, we, you know, there's a process we would go through and we would probably know in a couple months' time. So but again, it's the lag of when we approve a budget versus when we would get the, the, the if, if there is funding, we would get any grant. So um, you know, at, th at the end of the day, we have to fund what we know. Uh, if, so, if we do get a grant and it comes in in March or May, it would just go back to the reserve fund, right? So, yeah, I just and that's sort of my thinking is, like the rate, pay, the water payers and the uh, are already paying on their water bill for a reserve fund, and, and we're asking them for another reserve uh, of two hundred thousand, and then we get the money and we just put it into reserve. So we're asking for more reserves, and I know we can't, we don't have a crystal ball that we can see that we can get um, funding, but. Uh, in, in, in some discussion, um, you know, funding is, is, is pretty possible in, in, in going after this brown water situation. Yeah, yeah and, and I guess um, brown water is a optional, um, it's not regulated for us to yeah. do it. But I think we want to do it. But we want to do it, right? Do it. So uh, once we get the, uh, if we get a go ahead, then we can definitely look at funding options. Um, you know, it's one of those uh, th those items. Okay. The only other question I have is on this ninety thousand dollar pump. That's wastewater. Uh, water. Or, or water, and uh, this is something that's going that's going to be installed in our plant, in our in our, <coughs> in, our in our water plant. Yes. Actually, uh, this uh, water plant it has some parts. It's not being changed since the construction of the plant itself. Actually, they will be used for uh, fishery, uh, solar ash, 
So these pumps are being recommended by Aqua as well? Yes. Yes. And so what is the first one to be? To be done in 2018. In 2018. So actually it was, uh, the engineers was required last year, but there were no funds, so they made it. Councilor Chamonix? Okay, two, three things. That, well, the brown water is a problem in Northern Ontario. Uh, you can see it at Timmins, North Bay. Uh, if you go on Google, you'll find all kind of places. So there might be a special project. You might get money from to something like that. Uh, coming back to the, um, <laughs> what we talk about? <laughs> the meter. Um, I don't think you'll get too many people around here agree with meter. And I'll give you a, an example, Samir. Um, you guys are from North, uh, South Ontario. Up north, and I'm from the south too, I, I didn't know about this. They used to have a system called aqua flow something, Jim will know more than me, which prevent the water from freezing in the winter, but I guess it was some kind of illegal or not accepted by the province. Jim, is that what it is, or? Well, that's very expensive. Oh, that's anyway, so what happens, I mean, is that people run that water 24 hours a day in the winter, so the, the, the pipe don't freeze. Um, there's no choice. And uh, the guys from the town will go there, fix it, and tell them, let the water run 24 hours a day because the pipe will freeze all the time. I know, I know. Talk to the guys from the, from the town and they, they will explain to you. I know nothing about this really. Yeah, so just that would mean that our pumps and our systems would have 24 hours of operations. Yeah. So more strain on the infrastructure. Yeah, yeah it is, but that, that, okay. that's, the, that's the northern life. And that's not Kirkland Lake problem. It's a problem from North Bay probably up. I don't think Huntsville gets that. Uh, maybe they do, I don't know. But I know up north, it's like this pretty much everywhere. Some houses are okay, like mine is okay, but some others don't. And you'll be surprised how many people have to do that. Um, and you ask the guys from the, the town that works uh, the water and they will explain to you the whole thing and then. Yeah, I think the water metering thing is, it's basically we put it there, we're gonna come back for policy options. Yeah. We're not deciding it as no, part no, of the no, budget. No, but right? I just, so, yeah. just so Samir knows, yeah. like ask them Samir, they'll explain to you how, and I mean, everybody will tell you the same thing here. They, they run their water all the time. Like just a little trickle, but that's what they have to do. Yeah. Yeah. They bring the town to the work, so it's tough. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> I was surprised too when I came here. What? They run the water? <laughs> Councilor Kiley. I agree totally with uh, Jean Guy. This does happen, and we, especially in Chapeus, uh, they don't. Ha <laughs> they have water pressure problems, plus the brown brown water issue, and they do run 24 hours all winter. Uh, I just wanted to go back, because Tony, you mentioned this, we're, we had this 20 year plan, it was supposed to build up a reserve in it, and so Peter, in based on this 20 year plan, what do we have in reserve for 2017? Zippo, am I correct? Well, we have, a, in 2017, we have $117,000. Okay. Yeah. Right, and we're adding a basic. Get us a cup of coffee. We're adding, yeah, it'll get us a, pu a pump. Yeah. Right, so. Uh, it won't cover, so the, the balance of it is, like, again, the, the brown water issue was a 200 grand, and one pump is about 90 grand from what the, the cost we got from Aqua. So it, uh, the, the thing to focus here as well is future trends. As you can see, the uh, infrastructure is going up of the capital side here, right? Exactly, and, and I so think that's, where I don't have faith, no longer have faith in this 20 year plan. I do in the, some of the infrastructure aspect of it, but not the uh, replacement. I, I think it was low balled and uh, it's, so it, it's not gonna work. We don't, ha we're first year into it. It's, it's yeah, you're not gonna replace working. a water filtration plant for 2 million bucks. No, exactly. Right. One more question. I just wanna make sure if you hear pe people know the brown water problem might not be fixed, I think, right? Or is it gu guaranteed? <laughs> <laughs> I, I no, will, some people know. I will defer that to Aqua. They did the presentation, yeah. yeah. So they're trying so, and hopefully Yeah, this is, this is a, temp, a technical yeah. uh, solution that the, at their best uh, attempt to. I think that's why you might be able to get some money because I think the government will be happy if we could find a, a solution. Um, I know Hearst will be happy in Cap and Timmins and Norbay to know what, how, to, how to fix it. Um. Councillor Morgan. Just uh, one more question about the, what you have on the screen here, Peter. 
Um, under purchased goods, you've got a pretty good haircut there. Um, how have you been able to accomplish that? The, the forecast for 2018 was based on the projected actuals for 2017 that were presented earlier on. So the expenses in 2017 were actually lower than, than the budget. And we anticipate this to continue next year. Okay. Okay. Thank you. No other questions? Just a general question about the layout. Is this help provide some better information of where our dr cost drives are, cost drivers, and how it's broken out? Right? And you, you know, it's just, you're welcome to give me feedback at any time. It's, we're, we're trying to make it a little bit more reader friendly. So obviously, just we're also trying to highlight like utilities is a big portion of the white water and and the wastewater business, right? So, yeah, Peter, I like this one a lot better. The revenue is actually stated in the top, and then the ex compared to the other one when you have a minus and a cluster, and that's where I got screwed. <laughs> <laughs> the minus on the left, about twenty people. <laughs> no other questions. Councillor Roman. Well, again, I'd just like to repeat that uh, I think a 15% increase is, is, is too much to be asking uh, for. Uh, I think there's room here, particularly within the, um, the year end projections for 2017 to start. Um, I, I think um, those deficits are, are, have been overestimated. So I, I would ask that. You, you drill down into those numbers and, and come up with some, some accurate. Uh, well, uh, yeah, I, I think those projected deficits for both the waterworks and the wastewater are, are too high. Um, I, I, I have difficulty with a double digit uh, increase if, if, if this can be brought down to the 5% five, 5 range <laughs> anyway. Peter, I come in and put the actual there this year so we can see where we are and maybe that's what we approve, but does it mean that we actually spend that much or? 2016? But no, 17. I know it says 16 there, but I would like to have the 17 actuals. Like, like it says there that, for example, uh, compensation, 198. Well, do we actually spend 198 or do we spend 195 or 194? We don't know. Yeah, that's like, like the, the other one you had, you had what we were and what you projected at least give us yeah a that's the, that's the difference between a, a variance report and the uh, and a budget recommendation so I, basically we don't the actual would be if we were presenting this in February would we would have had I the know, actual I know, read I know so it would have been our best guesstimate of be, what it would because be because ne next week you're coming us and you want us to approve 15 percent like Jim said and oh I want to be able to live here next week, next year. <laughs> you haven't seen the tax side, sorry. Uh, oh. <laughs> but, but therein lies the problem. We, 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 we've often done this budgeting process in a very disconnected way and, and we're getting closer, but the fact that we've got to approve this water so far in advance of the tax bill makes it difficult because we don't know what the hit's gonna be on that side and, and there's only one pocket at the end of the day, and that's where we've got to balance it. And if we, you know, if we absolutely have to see a, a, an increase on the tax side, then, you know, this may be the year that we don't see a big increase on the water side, or vice versa. And that's, I'm just, you know, you're joking, but you're not joking. Like it's, yeah, it's, right. it's all connected. No other questions. Yeah, so um, just to walk you through here again, the uh, increases in uh, compensation have to do with a uh, portion of um, the billing clerk plus, plus the increase of the staff, uh, their annual uh, increase that they, they get. Um, utilities are up. Uh, purchase goods are up on this side. Um, <coughs> purchase services, this is the aqua um, 
um, <coughs> contract out. There's the deficit, <coughs> and then there's the one third of the uh, program support. So I, I actually forgot to mention that in on the water side as well. Program support is being phased in over three years. So the total number of program support is basically one hundred and sixty thousand dollars, right? But we're phasing it out in chunks. So um, phasing it in over three years. Um, the we're adding thirty thousand dollars to the capital side, um, and Samir can speak to any of the capital questions. Of the there's a couple pumps and and some replacement pumps that we're supposed to have on standby. And this, I think, speaks to Councillor Morgan's comment of uh, reusing and, and coordinating the left hand with the right hand. Um, and essentially, it comes to a 13% um, increase over 2017. The reason there's no 2016 actuals is because the 2016 budget was on the tax base. Councillor Shamiard. So, like before, the wastewater was 80% of, of the water. So that 13%, that's what will be covered there. It'd be 80% of the 15% you're, you're, you're putting the other one up. 85%. Mm -hmm. If now, but that's what you want. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> so, but you're, I know, that's, that's what I mean, yeah. yeah. So there would be no, well, it, it won't be 13%, basically, but because it would 85% of the water. Yeah. yeah. That's what's getting. Yeah. Okay. So the, the wastewater budget has gone up by 13%. Yeah. How it's funded is 85% of the water side. Yeah. So just make sure, because there's no 15 and 13, it's 15%. It will be 15% more. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Which is a lot. So, so, if wa so just as part of the discussion is if you, if the water rate comes down, so does the wastewater rate. Yeah. So there'll be pressures on this side. From a, from a regulatory standpoint, we need to balance both budgets separately when we approve them, right? So, uh, okay. so, so that's just a heads up. Councillor Roman and Councillor Morgan. Uh, should, for construction next year, should the connecting link project go through? Is there a water, wastewater component of that? Could, could I just say first, it, it did go through. Well, okay, I didn't want to say yeah, it. No, I wasn't it, sure if yeah. that was an yeah. official announcement. Yeah. But is that part of these figures? In 2018? In 2018, the construction, it's not, uh, construction part is not included in this budget. Uh, construction for uh, underground infrastructure it will be budgeted uh, from different uh, organizations as well as uh, it will be included uh, within capital budget. It's, uh, it's not included here. The capital, the, the construction of water and wastewater projects is not included here. Just the salaries only. The town salaries, but not the budget itself of the project for the projects. Uh, is that answering the question? Well, that answers my question, but I was wondering where the money will be coming from. It will come from uh, different uh, association, and uh, like now we have an uh, an offer from the Ministry of Transportation to construct part of the uh, within the uh, link uh, program fund. And this to, to reconstruct part of uh, government road, uh, but they only funded the road project. Yeah, okay. They don't fund the water and wastewater. There is another organization will try to get some uh, fund from them to uh, combine both together. Okay. Uh, Council Morgan. Just for clarification, um, on the wastewater because um, on the on the water one they work out to the same number but on the wastewater the service charges are 17 percent increase if I get that right and the expenditure is 13 percent so in reality the billing is going to be 17 percent increase is that correct The, 
the real figure will be on the billing side will be based on the 85 percent of the water budget okay mm -hmm. so we're raising it 15 percent and because we only need a 13 percent increase on the wastewater it's actually effectively a 17 percent increase is that am i or am i trying to make it too complicated well it's the, it's the way we do the billing right so on the user fee the the billing schedule is 80 we charge 85 percent of the water side right right so it, it will only be it's 85 so percent of whatever so, water is so what's that 17 percent number what does that mean on top line on the wastewater uh, this is just a relationship between the 2017 approval and the 2018 recommended <coughs> so to get that 16 it's simply a total total cost for wastewater in 2018 okay I'll uh, I'll think about that and s <laughs> see if I can <laughs> figure it out <laughs> Councillor Kiley and then Councillor Shen. No, Councillor Kiley. Yeah, Samir, uh, this interlink funding, I don't want to drag that one on, but do we know what, are they going to give us 100% funding or is it 85, 90%? I'm not talking about the, the water and sewer aspect okay. of it. I'm talking about the, this grant. M2O? That, uh, M2O. That we just got the approval on. Uh, uh, connecting link the from. Connecting uh, link. Yeah, the connecting yeah. link. They offering us uh, 850,000 uh, yep. just as a maximum charge in roads. They will provide us with 50% in awarding of the contract when we award the contract. And the rest will be next year, will be uh, given to us next year. And uh, they won't pay any money for the ro for the for the water or wastewater part uh, they expressed that they said this funding actually it's uh, remaining from 2017 budget different uh, communities they didn't uh, consume all their uh, parts so they get this amount of fund to us as we requested earlier However, it's not available for any items rather than uh, roads and storm water. Uh, sorry, roads and storm water system. And sidewalks, would you get sidewalks? In yes, sidewalks, yeah. illumination. Yeah. Like I can include sidewalks, illumination, traffic signals, sure. uh, intersection improvement. This all we can include it somehow, but uh, not water and wastewater. water. They are yeah. strictly so against it, that. It's not based on a percentage formula. It's just this is the amount that we're going to allow yeah this is the amount the maximum amount. maximum yeah so if we have if we, my in my in my mind i want to expand the the project a little bit in road and to get consume all the 850 but i like i'd like to get a, a price how much the price will cost how tenders i've been told that there's been tender before and i'm getting this as a guidelines, how much it will cost us, and am I available to extend the project a little bit, either west or east, to include some parties to consume the whole given amount of money. Just wanna go back to uh, Councillor Morgan's comment. Um, what I think you're confused at is, is the top line versus the total revenue line, the one that's bolded. In uh, 2017, we had uh, external recoveries of $48,000 that added to the, uh, the, um, um, the revenue. Um, however, in 2018, we don't anticipate that. So the, the budget is, so when you balance the minus one from the other, it's actually a 13% increase, right, just to clarify. Thank you very much and thanks for ask, uh, answering all those questions uh, it, 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 if you have any other questions between now and the 19th please feel free to email uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll set up if whatever the question is we'll reply with an answer back to everybody just so everybody has yeah, so 
right, if that works. So whoever asked the question, the answer so goes, goes to all the councillors. And then what we can do on the day of, we can print them out to include them in a, a last minute to, to the agenda just for public records. So. Thank you very much, fellas. Appreciate it. So the next item is uh, item uh, number uh, uh, 2C, 6-2C, extending all user fees until April 30th, 2018. So this, uh, this is a, uh, it's a procedural uh, um, request that um, will have minimal impact. It will, uh, obviously we're not raising our rates in January, so the revenue from, uh, from January to the end of April uh, um, we'll have that offset. Uh, but West Bay, what we're trying to do here is uh, going back to Councillor Morgan's uh, approach, we're trying to match the, uh, the user fee revenue with when we do the tax budget. So in um, in other municipalities, what they do is they set their user fee guidelines that are not water, wastewater, um, to uh, basically take effect May to April every year. Uh, so it usually most municipalities pass their tax budget within the first quarter of the, the next fiscal year. So by allowing this, by pushing these dates back, it will have a better comparison of uh, if council wishes to raise re re user revenue in one area to offset the tax support subsidy that that area gets to do those calculations. So it helps to be more transparent. It helps to do some more, uh, more um, I guess, uh, manipulation of the, uh, the, of the, the percentages when we get there. So um, it's essentially a procedure that we're asking to, uh, to move. Uh, so uh, we have prepared um, the user rates already uh, for January 1st. However, we figured that this would make more sense going long term <coughs> to give more transparency and, and match the revenues to the tax budget so they're approved at the same time. Any comments, questions? Councillor Roman, Councillor Morgan. Can I just ask what the financial impact would be? How, how much are we going to give up in that first? The, uh, the, uh, we haven't calculated all of them, but the estimate was under $20,000. So from all, it's from arenas to, uh, to um, permits, right? So it was under $20,000. Okay, because t typically, the, or in a lot of cases, the user rates don't cover the entire cost anyways, so um, I'm not convinced that, that there's a real advantage to, to doing that. Yeah, the advantage is, um, well, I think it's you're passing the budget all at once. For us to project our revenue in December and then come March to pass our what the tax uh, is, they're disconnected. So the advantage is that you're going to have it as a package because we can say we can say that in March if user rates is user fees go up by you know four or five percent on I don't know a ball diamond for example um, then we can we can see what the tax subsidy is for ball diamonds right so they're, they're disconnected process it's more or less just matching it out it's a best practice in the accounting side um, it is Kirkland Lakes uh, calendar cycle is uh, you know against the norm not with the rest of the municipalities so um, it's just trying to match it up easier. Councillor Morgan. I, I quite like it. Um, it's something I've argued for a long time that we need to deal with more of the budget at the same time because what, we, what we've seen historically is we deal with um, you know water, wastewater over here, that ratchets up, then we deal with uh, user fees, that ratchets up, then we deal with the tax and that ratchets up, and then we do it all again the next year rather than balancing everything and saying okay this this is the whole package this is what's coming out of your pocket based on you know real-time thinking as opposed to well geez what did we do with the, you know the user fees and what did we do with wastewater you know I mean yes we do introduce those things in the conversation but we don't we can't affect them when we're doing the budget and uh, um, same thing with capital I mean we have we've always dealt with it separately and even to the point where you know the, the consideration for capital doesn't seem to include operating costs so it's like 
you know, anything that we can do to harmonize things like this, I'm all for it. I realize, Jim, there might be, uh, uh, you know, the first time that we do this, we're going to, you know, have a small offset in the cost. But uh, to me, anyways, the way my brain works, this this is a much better uh, works much better for my my way of thinking. Usually, when it comes to user fees, uh, there is usually a, a policy on tax subsidization. So, um, my previous uh, history. We did a uh, policy on, for example, subsidizing transit or subsidizing arena costs. And there was a, a predetermined, you know, um, the user would pay 55% of the cost of running ICE, right? So that means that the tax base would sub subsidize the 45%, right? So um, if, if council had had those policies priorly, then, then your argument would be, would be pretty good because then you could just stick to the number. But I think uh, what Councillor Morgan is saying, and that's why it's allowing flexibility, that if you're wanting to offset one area, one area's budget, you can manipulate and uh, calculate the user fee uh, on it at that time during when you approve the tax budget. Yeah, so I think for us, if you recreational user fee, maybe 60-40, probably 60 uh, rate payers and 40 users. Yeah. And, and, and Sometimes it's just to keep those costs down to a, to a palatable amount. But I, I don't think we're too far out of whack on a 60 point. Any other questions? Do you want to comment that further, Peter, or are you? That'll come back. Uh, Thank you. Okay, the next <clears throat> the next item on the agenda is uh, under item uh, six three is uh, the uh, town clerk is going to talk on the ombudsman report on the recreation committee meetings. Okay. Yes. So we have uh, we've received a, a final report from the ombudsman. They have completed their investigation into whether or not the general meeting practices were covered by the recreation committee. One of the requirements is that we do publicize this report. It is on our webpage. It has been widely known that it is on the Ombudsman's website. Um, his opinion is that the Recreation Committee is a committee of council. Um, during the investigation, he did note that their council, our staff and council both know that there is a growing awareness that our meeting practices must improve. So he did make the three recommendations that had to do with our meeting practices and uh, we will be bringing back all the committees of council and taking a look at their, the way that they're all made up and ensuring that they do follow the procedures. So that has been put on our website. There's no decision that you need to make. It was just to publicize it. Okay, and, and I guess going forward now, we're going to make sure, ensure that uh, uh, we are following the... Exactly, yes. Good, thank you. Uh, I brought this subject up about the uh, the way the uh, rec committee was being uh, run and not in compliance with uh, closed meeting uh, categories and uh, it's almost 14 months and I know one one thing Tony said uh, after this report, the ombudsman uh, clarified what we should be doing, and I think there's other committees, as, as uh, you've mentioned, Joanne, that have to be looked at and uh, uh, applied the same same uh, operations as we do for our other committees. Uh, <coughs> we did. We've. I brought it to council 14 months ago. Uh, we had a delegation, uh, Kelly Wheeler, uh, who brought that up again uh, in, I think it was in March. And then again, Jim uh, from uh, Kirkland Gold Miners also mentioned about the committee itself and having the user groups involved, uh, having some uh, part of the, be appointed to the committee. And I think that's 
although that isn't in the recommendations. I did talk to the ombudsman about it, and they said they can't mandate that, but I would strongly suggest that we, we move in that direction in the new year. Um, I know Tony said the, uh, it shows that the system works. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't agree with that. Uh, the system did, didn't work, and it's taken 14 months to get where we are today. And finally, <coughs> when a citizen has to go to the ombudsman's office uh, to get the answers, the system is not working. So as a council, we have to react a lot quicker uh, to get answers out to, the, to our residents when they, when they are uh, making presentations. So just my general feelings about the whole thing. I'm glad to uh, see that we are moving in the right direction. I know, Joanne, uh, when you do something, it'll be done right. So I'm, I'm move, I've moved on, but I just want to make those comments. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I think just in reference to the system, uh, sure. Well, just let me, uh, if, okay. okay, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Well, I just wonder, me and Pat, are one, he talks about this, but there's, we're an intercommittee, we're, we're on there. There's three, three councillor, and there's nobody from the, from the town that's on there, and we, we have guarantee, we have put that in the paper every month, try to get people to come and uh, be on the committee. Nobody comes ahead. So when I go to the next meeting, do I, do I just walk out? Like, what do I do? To the next recreation <coughs> committee? No, no, the TPR committee. TPR committee? We try every month to get people, and nobody oh. wants to come. It's easy to talk after the fact, but Mm. And they, they, we had people, they quit, and there's for all kind of reason. I mean. And that's one that we need to look at. So it do is I a walk out? I want to know if I walk out or not. Okay, do well, I, just I would have to look at the Long-Term <laughs> Care Act because I know that there are some certain requirements that their me your meetings fall under that act also. And that one I'm really not familiar with, but I will have to talk with Nancy Loach about that and find out. But it, it is a valid is. point, I agree. It uh, is. I it, know we can get people on the rec committee, but... For some committees, people aren't interested in being on it, and, but, and we've tried at TPR. But, but Pat, just let you know, the rec committee before, we try to get people, uh, I'm not talking the last three years, I'm talking 15 years ago, yeah. and people all quit. It was the same thing. I was the only one from the community I went on there, and there was three councillors, and, the, and that's all there was. They all quit, and then after a while, the committee just fizzled out. But I think with the ombudsman and, and uh, what we need to do, are those meetings advertised? And I know with TPR it is. We do put it down in our paper. Yeah, yeah. Are your minutes uh, publicized and are they put on, we bring them to council TPR, we do. So you do have a reason to meet there. The public can go, they are open to the public. Yeah, it's open. Yeah. So we do advertise it. You do have your minutes that are published. So from that point of view, it, sit down and have your meeting. You are open to the public. If they don't show up, that's But isn't there supposed to be members from the public on there? Like it's supposed to be three and three or something, or there's a number? I'm not, no, I, I'm not so sure. I do know that my understanding is that only councillors are allowed to vote on that committee. No, I don't yeah, we sort of changed that, I think. Did, that did not change that? On the TPR one? Yeah. In your constitution? Well, because people were coming there and doing nothing, really. So they yeah. said, well, we said, well, we should be able to vote. And, but okay. still, like, after a while, but people don't want to get involved. They want to get involved after, oh, I should have got involved with this. Yeah, it's easy after the fact all the time. Yes. Um, and, and you know, we have trouble from every committee to get everyone. people to. Uh, just, uh, I agree, it, it's, it's always tough getting uh, people on the committees. It's a volunteer position. There's no glory in it, I, I agree, but they can play an active part in it. I think one of the issues, and I've said this before, that we advertise that we want people to join a committee. I think as councillors, and I mean, I'm, I have asked two people if they would go on the rec committee, and they said yes. And I think it's up to council to, yes, advertise, and also submit names of people, and I'm not trying to put together the old boys club, uh, but I think it being more proactive to uh, solicit people to get on the committee from the council or the, themselves, because even, well, the economic development committee, we try to get people on there, and we're asking for a resume like they're applying for a job. They're not gonna sit down and take the time to do all that. How many uh, new members on that economic com committee? Probably none in the last couple of years. 
and, and because it, it's just too cumbersome to get people appointed. So I don't think they have to, to do a resume to do that. Peter, did you want to? Yeah, just to add some, uh, some of my own experience from uh, previous places. Uh, most of the official subcommittees of council were only led by councillors. Um, advisory committees had citizens sit on them. Yeah. But one of the ones that if, if, if TPR is a statutory committee, um, then I, it, might be, it might be just a matter of looking at our procedural bylaws and this, the town's procedures of how they assign committees. Uh, official, official council committees uh, should only be restricted to councillors, elected officials. Uh, and as long as the process, the, one of the things I took back from the, the Ombudsman's report is about the process being transparent and open, right? Not necessarily the makeup of the committee, but the actually openness of it. So when you do meet, it is open to the public. The minutes come to council to get ratified uh, after the, the, the local subcommittee meeting meets. Um, obviously, the committee takes direction from council. Right, so I think that's that's one thing to always keep in mind that none of the SIB committees can actually make decisions until they get ratified at, at the council level. So anyway, I, I'm pleased that we're moving forward with this because I, I think it's important and people the transparency aspect of it, people will know what's going on. There's no there's no hidden agendas. And and I think Peter said an important word, there's no decision made there. Everything is made here. And yeah. that's what people have to realize. So yeah. if we had the TPR, we decide something, it has to be decided here. That's what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah, exactly. You know, committees are always hard, and uh, uh, sometimes we, uh, you know, people are upset because they aren't on the committee, but sometimes we're looking for people. It's a, it's a real cat and mouse game sometimes. But just, just in reference to the system and the comment I made that the system works, uh, the comment was made in, in regards to if a, if a resident has an issue with any of our committees, they have the right to go to the ombudsman. <coughs> and, and, and that's the process that worked. They went to the ombudsman, the ombudsman answered them. Uh, we got the recommendations, and now we're going forward to apply, to apply those. It, it, it wasn't to say that the way we had it set up was right. And, and also, many committees were, were, were set up for different reasons. and. You know, a lot of them just stayed on. Uh, they really have no purpose. So as Joanne mentioned earlier, we are going to look at all our committees uh, and uh, uh, to determine which ones are, are, are committees that should be left. And, uh, and then we would also look at, uh, with this council, uh, committees going forward and how they should be set up, I guess. So. Please. I agree, Tony. Uh, I, I guess what I was trying to say is that uh, from talking to some of the people at the <coughs> Ombudsman's office, there has been a number of inquiries from Kirkland Lake residents. Uh, we're right at the top of the list. So uh, I, I think we can avoid a lot of this with these changes and answer the questions. If we're doing our job right, uh, and to the best of our ability, uh, we can eliminate people going to the ombudsman's office because I think we've got enough capable people in this room that can can deal with the situations. Yeah, I, and you know what? We could sure probably eliminate a lot of it, but really, it's the choice of an individual that wants to go to the ombudsman. Definitely. Right, wrong, indifferent. Yeah. Uh, everybody has the right, and they'll be heard. Uh, it'll be investigated. Uh, we'll get the results and we move forward uh, for sure. Councilor Morgan. Just out of curiosity, Joanne, uh, ad hoc committees that are formed for a specific purpose, do they automatically fall away or do we have to uh, do pass something that I extinguishes them? No, as soon as their purpose is done, they Perfect. just automatically stop. Okay. So no more CA CAOs? <laughs> The next, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, the next item is uh, town planner item uh, six four, sale of land adjacent to 43 Kirkland Street, and we're looking at repealing a bylaw that was set uh, 10069. Hello again. 
Okay, so I'm here tonight to talk about um, passing a new bylaw in regards to the purchase and sale agreement or purchase and sale of a piece of property located next to 43 Kirkland Street in Swastika. Uh, this piece of land was originally agreed to be sold to uh, the owner to the to the east of the property uh, for $3,500 plus legal. Uh, what ended up happening, I guess, over the course of the last few years, we've had communication with that owner. He had a hard time coming up with the money to pay for it. We have expensed a $5,000 survey. Um, so we are in the hole with this land sale. Uh, but at this point, we're just trying to get it resolved. That was an expense that was done in 2011. Uh, we have $1,000 in holdings right now at the law, at the legal office from the previous owner. We are we're starting to collect uh, annual payments from them just to try and get them to close the file. Uh, last year we were made aware that he was putting the house up for sale so we did say that we would work with the, the new purchaser once they decided to come in and, and talk to us. The thousand dollars we did say we would apply to the sale. So at this point all we're trying to do is pass a new bylaw to reflect the new owner so that we have the ability to sell to that new owner versus the old. So it's just a fixing up sort of situation. Councillor Morgan. I was, I was going to ask you about the thousand dollars, Ashley, but I think you've answered my question. So there was at least a verbal agreement between the town and the previous owner that the thousand dollars would be applied towards the new purchaser. Yeah. Okay. Because it seemed that seemed like it was kind of hanging out there, and it was really our money and not his. But uh, it, okay. You we guys. have it in writing. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, and that'll come back as a bylaw yes. later. Okay, thanks, Ashley, Thank for you. the. The introduction and uh, reading and consideration of bylaws. It's moved by Councillor Kiley, seconded by Councillor Morgan. The bylaw 17 121, being a bylaw to amend the traffic and parking bylaw number uh, 15 017, by removing a cab stand on Wood Street and expanding the definition of a trailer, be read a first, second, and third time, enacted and passed. Any discussion? That's what Ashley, you presented this one last, last week. Yes. Okay. All in favor? Okay, that's scary. It's moved by Councillor Morgan, seconded by Councillor Kiley. The bylaw 17 122, being a bylaw to deem lots at 357 Prince Street and 27 Earl Street, part of a registered plan M1116, not to be registered, to be read a first, second, and third time, enacted and passed. Any discussion? All in favor? That's scary. Moved by Councillor Kiley, seconded by Councillor Morgan. The bylaw 17 123, being a bylaw to authorize Mayor and Clerk to execute all documents related to the sale of land adjacent to 43 Kirkland Avenue to James Barrett, repealing bylaw 10 069, be read a first, second, and third time, enacted and passed. And that's just the one that Ashley spoke to. Any other comments? All in favor? It's carried. Moved by Councillor Morgan, seconded by Councillor Kiley, the bylaw 17 124, being a bylaw to amend bylaw 16 091, extending 2017 user fees to April 30th, 2018, be read a first, second, and third time, enacted and passed. All in favor? It's passed. You're against? Okay, notice item eight, notices of motion. None identified. Uh, confirmation bylaw. It's moved by Councillor Kiley, <coughs> seconded by Councillor Morgan. The bylaw 17 125, being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of Council at its meeting held December 5th, 2017, be read a first, second, and third time, enacted and passed. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. 
Councillor's reports. Councillor Barker, then Councillor Shemiard. The, the Town Christmas Party will be this weekend. Um, it's also the recognition banquet for our staff, and I just want to thank the recognition committee for all their efforts in putting together. Uh, there's a lot of time and, and energy put into this, and um, I just want to congratulate them on an uh, excellent job, and I look forward to Saturday. So thank you. Thank you. Let's move as well. Councillor Shamier. I don't know if you want to talk about it, but Christmas wish. Are you going to talk about it? Right. Please. Yeah, I know if you, most of you probably uh, heard of the radio. Uh, Saturday, they had their Christmas wish, and they raised... Uh, $60,000 and just say thank you to Kim and Robin Conley and the CJKL staff for a good job. The Christmas Wish uh, Foundation is a big, uh, big part of the community. Uh, so what they do, they'll buy presents for the uh, for some of the kids around town and also around the around the north. Um, Christmas Wish have been around for a long time. I remember being a student and the kid, uh, student, the teacher, and the kids would be coming back and tell us what they got, and it, it was it was nice to to hear. Um, I know some of the councillor put money in there and uh, some, most of the people around town. So $60,000 for a small town is actually amazing. So just thank you very much, Robin and Kim and the city of KL staff. Yep, uh, certainly uh, echo uh, that. Uh, you know, putting a smile on a, on a child's face is uh, certainly nothing more greater than that. And I certainly want to echo what uh, Councillor Barker said on the recognition uh, evening and look forward to attending that as well. Uh, since our last meeting, I did attend the uh, lighting of the Tree of Life uh, here at the, uh, at the post office. And uh, the, uh, it, that's done every year. The uh, money raised through the uh, purchasing of a light bulb in, uh, in memory of a loved one. Uh, that all goes to uh, the um, auspice and palliative care. And just to give you an example, uh, in, in the region, uh, uh, Betty Smallwood and her crew, uh, I think Tom's mom is certainly involved in that as well. Uh, um, they've, uh, through that raising of money, uh, through generous donations, uh, they've been able to put a hospice unit uh, here in Kirkland Lake at our hospital, uh, one in Inglehart, and I believe uh, just a, <coughs> a few months ago, they completed the one at Miskaming Shores. So it's certainly, money well spent and as I mentioned at the, uh, at the ceremony, uh, you know, one doesn't really realize the importance of these units until you're, you or your family uh, uh, are involved in, in the use of one and then you really get to understand just how important they are. So certainly want to thank Betty and the whole crew uh, for what they're doing for the, uh, for the uh, region. Uh, adjournment. Moved by Councillor Morgan, seconded by Councillor Kiley, that Council adjourns its regular meeting of December 5th, 2017, to an in camera meeting to discuss one issue concerning a litigation matter affecting the municipality. Okay, all in favor? Meeting adjourned. Thank you.